good early afternoon. I hope everybody's getting ready for a great Thanksgiving holiday. You feel like you've been blessed. So happy Thanksgiving to all you guys. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. Um, I guess we could start with, uh, you know, just the effort maybe that you got from the second half on. It seemed like you guys were playing really well. Well, yeah, it, it really, uh, the, it, it was, I mean, it is what it is. The loss thing, it, 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 and it should. That's, that's what we're in the business to do, to win. But realistically, and watching the tape from the 9-18 mark of the first quarter, until the uh, nine, nine something, I may be wrong on the seconds, but about the nine minute mark of the first quarter, post the first two drives in which we got kind of nickel and dime. Uh, it wasn't anything big, but it was just three yards, four yards, five yards, third and one, two, three, first down. And uh, that was the story of the first two drives. We just couldn't, couldn't get off the field. Uh, too many third and shorts, third and low mediums. And, but from about the nine minute mark of the first half, uh, the first quarter, till well about 5.18 on the, in the fourth quarter, uh, they scored seven points uh, from the 26 yard line and a field goal in, in, in a drive where we had a 15 yard penalty. Uh, in that time frame, we had you know three turnovers. Uh, we didn't always get off the field on three and out, but there was some really good football played in that point in time. Uh, and basically, uh, I think, gave us an opportunity to make a run at it, uh, set up a score in that time frame, got the ball down, I think, to about the 10 to set up a score. So some really good football. Uh, that was because they just, they didn't look at the scoreboard. They just kept playing hard. Uh, and it really, you, you can't take the bad away. The, the, the bad's the bad. The loss is the loss. But you also got to give credit when credit's due. Those guys did not look at the school board. They just kept fighting. And, uh, you know, I could name the names, and but you, you saw the game. I mean, they just, they just, they just played hard, played hard. And uh, in that time frame, there was some really good football played. We just got to put it all together at some point in time. Probably the best, really, second quarter and third quarter that we played all year long up against a very, very good opponent. I mean, not probably it is. I mean, it's just factual. When you talk about now looking at the scoreboard, uh, was that they did that better this week? Because there have been some games where seemingly one thing goes wrong. And yeah, you and I can't really say if they did or they didn't. But like you said, seemingly it looked like external factors affected them. And, and we got to grow past that. That's just what good teams do. Uh, I don't think that was the case at all the other night, at all. In fact, far from Cam Kitchens, I mean, I obviously had the three picks the week before, but leading the team with the 13 tackles, forcing the fumble. Is there just something that, I mean, I know you've put in a ton of work and we've heard all the film stories, but is there something that just at a certain point started to click with him where now he's always in the right spot where he needs to be? Well, yeah, there's something that clicked. <laughs> it's, called, uh, it's called being a pro, doing your job. But more importantly, he's, he's a really smart guy anyway. If you've ever been around Cam at all, I mean, he's, he's highly intelligent, does well in school. But, but, you know, I've been around guys that didn't like school that were very intelligent football players. Uh, and that's not the way it's supposed to be. I'm just being real with you. Uh, and he's just a smart guy. And he's really studied like a pro. I mean, he's, he, he approaches the game like guys did when I was in the NFL. Like, it's, this is my job, it's a full-time job. I've got to work every day at my craft, in the film room, extra, uh, that's who he is. And so he's going into games very confident, but he's also going into games knowing what he's supposed to do, but better yet, knowing what they're going to do. And, and uh, Akeem Mesador had uh, the two sacks, the first fumble. I know we've talked about it before, but uh, just, just the effort that he's giving even late in the year. Right. Well, the big thing that we're trying to build here is where we have a collective group that have a competitive spirit that, that every play, they just play with relentless effort and, and affect the game. And he just, he kind of does that naturally. It's just in his DNA. 
on top of that, he's a very good athlete, very powerful, can run, but he's got a high, high motor. You know, he practices that way. I mean, what you see on Saturday, you know, sometimes when you watch younger guys or you, you're developing a program, you'll see a, a different guy on Saturday than you do on practice day. You've heard, you know, he's a gamer. He didn't practice very well, but he's a gamer. Well, there's, you know, my experience, maybe I'm wrong. There's very, very, very few of those guys. Uh, but his practice tape looks like he's game, game tape, so it's not a surprise. Coach, what do you, what is Daryl Jackson giving you this season? And then just another young guy, but what do you envision for his next step as a player? Just keep improving. What he's given us, he's a big, powerful man that has a, a, a really unique personality because he's, I don't know if you've been around him very much, but he's very talkative. He's a strong leader, very talkative, uh, smart guy. Uh, that but he's a huge man huge man and he's very powerful so he can command double teams and if you don't stay on him with a double team and so what people I don't know if you've noticed it but a lot of teams run away from six a lot of teams which has allowed us later in the year to to overload some things away from him because he he you know he can eat up space and just his future I mean just the vision you have for him oh I, I think haven't been around you never know I mean I don't run an NFL team but everybody wants to when they start talking about like questions you're asking me where do you see this going I see him having a great career at Miami and, and continue to get better and then he certainly has the ability to make a living doing this you, you guys lost uh, Corey Flagg early in the game and he's kind yeah. of the point guard for you on that defense just how did you kind of fill in for him and what's the plan on the board not kind of a point guard, he's quarterback. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, he's another guy like Cam Kitchens that puts a lot of time in it, studies it, doesn't just know what we're doing, but knows what they're doing. Uh, the other guys can do it, they're just a little quieter, mm -hmm. just personality-wise they are. He's, he's more vocal. Those other guys will step up. You know, I've seen guys before where one guy was kind of the lead dog and then something happened and Somebody just stepped up and took his place. Uh, that's what we expect. I think that'll happen. You know, sometimes you don't talk when somebody else is in the room because they talk real well. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen some talkative people get real quiet when they get around somebody that's more talkative than them. And so, but they, they step up when they need to. And so, hopefully that'll happen. We're working on it. We got them in a room right now in their break, working on quarterback and things, which We've done all year, but it's got to happen now. It's a it, that that one. Uh, boy, I hate it for him. What what a what a good young man that has given us everything he's had. Yeah. What about Leonard Taylor? Uh, he's probably giving you more spectacular uh, than just about anybody on defense, other than maybe Cam. Um, I'm assuming you would like to see it more consistently. What's the next step for him? As yeah, I, I put Mez in that category too. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, just, he, he knows, it's, that's a hard way to make a living where he's at. It's a hard way to make a living. I mean, there's, there's, there's some big men in those trenches. And so a young guy that's as talented as he is, it's just a growth process, it's a maturing process. You know, uh, and I got exposed to that in early, early in my career, actually my first year. You know, now when I say the name, you're gonna say, whoa, and I'm not saying he's that. I'm just comparing the same things you know, I saw Reggie White when he was a freshman. He wasn't Reggie White that got the gold jacket, although you knew this guy is different. He's special. Uh, you know, you see that. Again, I don't want anybody writing that I said Leonard was <laughs> Reggie White. I, that's for the future to determine. What I'm saying is, when you're in the line of scrimmage and you're as young as he is, okay, uh, it, it, there is a, it's a slower development. It is because that, that's hard work, hard work. He's getting better at playing with better pad leverage. He's getting better at playing with his hands. The last two weeks, uh, huge jump in that area. And, and I think you're just gonna keep seeing him getting better and better and better at what he does because he is a talented young man with a lot of power. Because you've done this for a little while, obviously. Yeah. What have you learned about the psychology when you go, and again, not making a comparison, but when you tell a kid like Leonard, I see little bits of Reggie White. 
No, I didn't. I didn't. No, say no, 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 no. It's okay. So when you mentioned done in the same paragraph, when, when you want to inspire any player right. and say you're reminiscent in some way of, of another of the same type of process, the same type, yes. process. How how do you get them to hear that and not hear I'm that guy? Uh, well, they're going to hear that they're that guy because they got enough people telling them that other places. Uh, I, I think you just, you know, Coach Johnson, I don't get the quote exactly right, but you know the quote, go look it up, about you treat him a man, the end result is you treat him as you want him to be, then he will become that. Uh, I think there's a lot of truth to that. You know, I, I've had to remake myself in coaching. I mean, there's been a lot of things changed since 1980, a lot. And uh, one of the things that has changed is that uh, back in the old days, you know, you, you could stay after people all day, 24-7, and all the way through every game. And it, that's just the way it happened, and the guys just win. It's, it's not that way any longer, and I'm just being honest with you. You've got to look for the positive, and, and you've got to be in the corrections. You've got to correct a certain way. And so just stay as positive with him and just stay relentless with it. Just stay relentless with it, of painting the vision for it. Show him on tape. Show him others doing it. Show him Derrick Brown at Auburn when he was a freshman. Show it Derrick Brown the last game before he got picked, the third player in the draft. Uh, so he can see uh, what can happen. Do your eyes still light up a little bit as a coach when you see those kids? And it, and it is probably rare now. Who you, you don't have to always be positive. Who they, they can take. What we used to call coaching, and now they call nah, just coach them all. Nice. Treat them all the same, coach them all different. Treat them all the same, coach them all different. Because they got personalities just like us. You know, what motivates you different than him. I mean, it's it just the way it is. Uh, my, my two children, completely different. One of them got a head like concrete, and one of them you can talk to with your eyes. The girls the one with the head like concrete, which was foreign to me because I've always been in a locker room around guys and all that. So, Coach, how big is this Abin Akanda kid for Pittsburgh, the running back for him? Excuse me? The running back for Pitt. Just uh, I don't even know how to pronounce the last name, so I'm going to try again. But, but I'll help you there. <laughs> I, I, I'll help you. Uh, when I was a young GA, Coach Majors asked me to tell him about a running back, and I called his name. I said, You mean so and so? And uh, he said, look, I'm not trying to get to know the guy. I just want to know his number. <laughs> so you're OK. Uh, now, if he was on our team, you need to know his name. But uh, yeah, very talented, strong runner, great vision, uh, gets the ball a lot. I mean, they feed him. You know, one of the marks of a, a great running back, if you want to find where the real ones are, look at how many times they feed him. How many times do they feed the ball to him? You know, uh, I was on a team one time that had Barry Sanders and Thurman Thomas in the same backfield. Yeah. Uh, is there any doubt who got the ball? Well, good players at running back, they get a lot of carries. And uh, they, they feed him the ball a lot, and he is a talented player.